Wonder is the Hebrew word mofe, put them together. So God is sending you a signal to do what? Get more faith. So it ain't just a sign and a wonder as we think about it, huh? Jesus was the sign and wonder for us to get born again. He was the signal that the Messiah is here. And when he rose from the dead, there was this wonder for you to get more faith. Ooh, Jesus. That was Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when you see signs and wonders, get more faith. Get more faith. Acts 18. Come on, we got a little bit more time. Y'all ain't getting bored, are you? Yes, sir. Amen. Acts 18. This one quick and easy, huh? I like it when that happens. Another one ain't easy. Amen. Acts 18, verse 24 to 26. 24 to 26. And a certain Jew named uh, Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man. In other words, high class, brother. You know, he drinks with his pinky in there. Eloquent man. Knows how to talk or, or, or <laughs> he knows how to be intellectual. Amen. He can articulate himself very well. He got all the right words. <laughs> and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. In other words, he knew the Bible too. Huh? So he was elegant and he knew the Bible. Watch this. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of whom? John. All he knew was the baptism of John. Let's keep going. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, who when Aquila and Priscilla, oh, Lord help me, I'm in trouble with this one. And when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him under, they took them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now watch that. Aquila and Priscilla, what name is that sound like? That sound like a man name? Amen, your name is so. That sound like a female name? Yes. Sound like a female was teaching that man something, huh? Oh, go wrap me out. Sound like it was a woman teaching a man here. Yes. Amen. Hey, that's scripture. Did Warren say it or did the word say it? Amen. I ain't said a woman's supposed to be in here preaching. I just said a woman was teaching somebody. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. <laughs> Chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as even heard whether there be an Holy Ghost. <laughs> I like that. But anyway, verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John baptism. Then said Paul, John truly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on
I know for some of y'all this is too long. <laughs> Ephesians 3. Don't worry, you get to be rebellious a little. Ephesians 3, verses 10 to 12. To the intent that now unto the principles and the powers in heavenly places might be known by the church to that manifold wisdom of God, according to the external purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have what? Boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. And y'all see how many places Jesus talking about being bold? So many places. Go over to uh, chapter 6 of Ephesians. I may have to skip some of this. Chapter 6, looking at verses 19 and 20. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am the ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. But it's a mystery to those who don't understand God. It's a mystery to you who just read it for intellectuality. It's a mystery. You're not born again. You don't know the revelation of God. Or you found out and read a story and you want to quote it. Where's your revelation of spirit? Because guess where it lies? In your attitude. And how you act. And how you're served. How you're treating people. How you're treating this ministry. How you treat others around you. See, that's the mystery. Until you get that in your spirit, you ain't born. <laughs> you can't walk around talking about you born again. Ain't no love in you. There ain't no servanthood in you. There ain't no work in you. Ain't nothing but alcohol in you. Amen. Yeah. All right, Lord. I, I'm gonna skip over the leader. Go to Hebrews four. <laughs> I know when we were here, I gotta say it now. When we were here, this man back here, when I was here, things had changed. He would get us up early in the morning, line up every man in here, and make everybody who's sleeping in these beds back here go out there and clean them. I don't know when it stopped, but I was there picking back up again. We had to serve here. There wasn't gonna be a dirty bed. There wasn't going to be a dirty floor. There wasn't going to be a dirty bathroom. When Ellis was here, Ellis did not play. This was his sanctuary. There was spin and span. I don't understand why one man got to clean the van. When all y'all riding it, you want them to take you to the store in it. You want them to pick you up stuff in it. But you don't want to help vacuum it. Why should you clean it? Yeah, I said it now. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. But you want to sleep here. You want to eat here. You want to use the water here. You want to use the soap. You want the mess. You think everybody deserves to give you something, but you can't get that. Is that really Christ? I don't think so. Let me close this out. Hebrews 4.16. <coughs> Hebrews 4.16. And says, for some, when they had heard, did provoke, how be it, not, nah, I'm in the wrong place, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. let us therefore come, there you go, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain what? Mercy. Find grace to help in the time of need. But let me go back to that 316, I kind of like that. For some, of them, when they had heard, did provoke, how be it, not, nah, all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Yes. I know I got to make it over Y'all know what wilderness is? How many of you ever read the book of Numbers? Yes. In the Bible. You know what the book of Numbers is? You think it means one, two, three, four, five? No, 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 no. It means in the Hebrew wilderness. How many of you been traveling around this circle? of homelessness, drug addiction, and alcoholism for years now. You're in wilderness experience. How many of you keep saying, why can't I get this and why can't I get that? Because you're in a wilderness experience. You keep going around a circle. You ain't even on a merry-go-round. Amen. It's a merry-go-round 
changes loops and direction. But all you do is go on one big circle. You will start going ahead and all of a sudden you're right back in the circle with you. Why? Why is that? Because you have no boldness. You don't have the boldness to love. You don't have the boldness to forgive. You don't have the boldness to serve. You don't have the boldness to believe. Amen. Finally, with this last scripture. Boy, I'm going to pick this up later. Go to Philippians 3. We're close. Philippians 3. Let me encourage you with this one. <coughs> Philippians 3. Let's start at, uh, I want to make sure I'm in the right place. But I need to tell you about that word, Mr. Spirit. Because people think, oh, that's just the Old Testament. That's just your excuse to stop going around, sir. That's just your excuse. You know? I heard uh, a young lady told me the other day, born again. I know what church she go to. She wants to sing gospel. She wants to catch me on the elevator at the job. And she already had written in the pen her name on one finger and her last name on another. Brother, I'm going to get this tattoo on my finger. I said, baby, don't worry. She no tattoos on my knees. Right? Now, I'm not legalistic, right? She said, well, that was the Old Testament. Uh -huh. I said, but the new says, aren't you the temple of God? That's right. The new says, don't defile the temple. Now, will God forgive you? Sure. Those who came to Jesus with them, you are don't worry about it. You ain't got to get them removed. But after you born again, there should be a question of that. Sodom and Gomorrah was filled with piercings and homosexuality, tattoos and homosexuality. Think tattoos are new? But how do you want to say you born again and want to get the tattoo? No. Will she just go to heaven? She probably will. But guess what? She'll probably lose a crowd. I ain't losing no crowd. Amen. Amen. I don't lost enough. Amen. But don't justify it by saying that's Old Testament. Just like people say, well, Jesus drank. The devil is a lie. I can have a drink. Jesus drank. Jesus never drank no alcohol. And if you believe that, I'm sorry. I don't know where you buy what you read. You just want to have an excuse to get a beer. So if you didn't drink, then why, why do you think that whiskey, uh, Hennessy, uh, Budweiser, uh, uh, what's that, the bowl? Just say you want to get drunk. Go get drunk. But <laughs> Jesus didn't get drunk. That was unfermented wine. Grape juice. What we drink on Holy Communion Sunday. Amen? <laughs> but finally, Philippians 3, 13. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. I don't count that I understand everything. I love Paul. He wrote three-fourths of the New Testament still said he don't know everything. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are where? Behind me. Y'all ready to get the things that are behind me? And reaching forth unto those things that are what? In front of me. Come on, y'all. Y'all, some people feel that. Circle. Don't look at this as a negative experience. Start looking at this as a positive experience to start carrying you forward. Amen. How many ready to go forward? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this word this evening. I thank you, Lord, for this mighty word. I pray that those who are ready to walk bold for you will do so. Those who are ready to have the mystery of your word open up to their hearts, their minds, and their bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I just thank you for those who are here because you predestinated for them to be here. No one is here by excuse. We don't believe in pop luck or wishes. We believe in the almighty God and him pure name for everything. Because you are not in time, Lord. You are outside of time. That's why you know the ending from the beginning. That's why you're the alpha and the omega. That's why you are the first and the last. So we honor you always. And I ask these things and believe these things. In Jesus' name, let the house say amen. 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 amen.